Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phantom Brony. You're listening to Vocal Phantom, and this is the final part of Psychosis. Hope you enjoy it so far. Let's go ahead and wrap this story up. Terror literally overwhelms me every time I try to fit the pieces of this nightmare together. That email, short, cut off. Was it from someone trying to get the word out? Some friendly voice desperately trying to warn me before it came? Seen with my own eyes. Don't trust them. Exactly what have I been so suspicious of? It could have, have masterful control of all things electronic, practicing its insidious deception to trick me into coming outside. Why can't it get in? It knocked on the door. It must have some solid presence. The door. The image of those doors in the upper hallway as guardian and modernless flashes back in my mind every time I traced this path of thoughts. If there is some phantom entity trying to get me to go outside, maybe it can get through doors. I keep thinking back over all the books I've read or movies I've seen, trying to generate some explanation for this. Doors have always been so intense foci for human imagination, always seen as wards or portals of special importance. Or perhaps the door is just too thick. I know that I couldn't bash through any of the doors in this building let alone the heavy basement ones. Aside from that, the real question is, why does it even want me? If it just wanted to kill me, it could have done it in a number of ways, including just waiting until I starved to death. What if it doesn't want to kill me? What if it has some far, hor some far more horrific fate in store for me? God, what can I do to escape this nightmare? A knock on the door. I told the people on the other side of the door I need a minute to think until I come out. I'm really just writing this down so I can figure out what to do. At least this time, I heard their voices. My paranoia, and yes, I recognize I'm being paranoid, has me thinking of all sorts of ways their voices could be faked electronically. There could be nothing but speakers outside, stimulating human voices. Did it really take them three days to come talk to me? Amy is supposedly out there along with two policemen and a psychiatrist. Maybe it took them three days to think of what to say to me. The, psych the psychiatrist's claim could be pretty convincing. If I decided to think this has all been a crazy misunderstanding and not some entity trying to trick me into opening the door. I have to give him one more thing. It's a great explanation. It neatly explains everything. It perfectly explains everything, in fact. I have every reason to shake this nightmarish fear that something or consciousness or being out there wants me to open the door so it can capture me for some horrible fate worse than death. It would be foolish after hearing that explanation to stay in here until I starve to death just to spite the entity that might have gotten everyone else. It would be foolish to think that after hearing that explanation. I might be one of the last people left alive on an empty world, hiding in my secure basement room spitting some unthinkable, deceptive entity just by refusing to be captured. It's a perfect explanation for every single strange thing that I've seen or heard, and I have every reason in the world to let all my fears go and open the door. That's exactly what I'm not going to do. The psychiatrist had an older voice, authoritarian but still caring. I liked it. I'm desperate just to see someone with my own eyes. He said I have something called cyberpsychosis, and I'm just one of a nationwide epidemic of thousands of people having breakdowns triggered by a suggestive email that got through somehow. I swear he said got through somehow. I think he means spread throughout the country inexplicably, but I'm incredibly suspicious that the entity slipped up and revealed something. He said I'm a part of a wave of emergent behavior, that a lot of other people are having the same problem with the same fears, even though we've never communicated. That, that neatly explains the strange email about the eyes that I got. I didn't get the original triggering email. I got a descendant of it. My friend could have broken down too, and tried to warn everyone he knew against his paranoid fears. That's how the problem spreads, the psychiatrist claims. I could have spread it, too, with my texts and instant messages online to everyone I know. One of those people might be melting down right now, after being triggered by something I sent them something they may interpret any way that they want. Something like a text saying, seen anyone face-to-face -face lately? The, 
Psychiatrist told me that he didn't want to lose another one. That people like me are intelligent, and that's our downfall. We draw connections so well that we draw them even when they shouldn't be there. He said it's easily to get it's easy to get caught up in paranoia in our fast paced world, a constantly changing place where more and more of our interaction is simulated. That's exactly why I'm not going to. How can I be sure? How can I know what's real and what's deception? All of these damn things with their wires and their signals that originate from some unseen origin. They're not real. I can't be sure. Signals through a camera, fake video, deceptive phone calls, emails, even the television lying broken on the floor. How can I possibly know it's real? It's just signals, waves, light. The door! It's bashing on the door. It's trying to get in. What insane mechanical tra can Travis could it be using to simulate the sound of men attacking the heavy woods so well? At least I'll finally see it with my own eyes. There's nothing left in here for it to deceive me with. I've ripped apart everything else. It can't deceive my eyes, can it? Seen with your own eyes. Don't trust them. They... Wait. Was that desperate message telling me to trust my eyes? Or warning me about my eyes, too? Oh my god. What's the difference between a camera and my eyes? They both turn li light into electrical signals. They're the same. I can't be deceived. I have to be sure. I have to be sure. Date unknown. I calmly asked for a paper and a pen, day in and day out, until it finally gave them to me. Not that it matters. What am I going to do? Poke my eyes out? The bandages feel like part of me now. The pain is gone. I figured this would be one of my last chances to write legibly as, without my sight to correct mistakes, my hand will slowly forget the motions involved. This is a sort of self-indulgence, this writing. It's a relic of another time, because I'm certain everyone left in the world is dead, or something far worse. I sit against the padded wall, day in and day out. The entity brings me food and water. It masks itself as a kind nurse, as an unsympathetic doctor. I think it knows that my hearing has sharpened considerably now that I live in darkness. It fakes conversations in the hallways, on the off chance that I might overhear. One of the nurses talks about having a baby soon. One of the doctors lost his wife in a car accident. None of that matters. None of it's real. None of it gets to me. Not like she does. That's the worst part. The part I almost can't handle. The thing comes to me, masquerading as Amy. Its recreation is perfect. It sounds exactly like Amy. It feels exactly like her. It even produces a reasonable facsimile of tears that it makes me feel on its lifelike cheeks. When it first dragged me here, it told me all the things I wanted to hear. It told me that she loved me, that she had always loved me, that I didn't understand why I did this, that we could still have a life together, if only I would stop insisting that I was being deceived. It wanted me to believe. No. It needed me to believe that she was real. I almost fell for it, too. I really did. I doubted myself for the longest time. In the end, though, it was all too perfect, too flawless, and too real. The false Amy used to come here every day, and then every week, and then finally stop coming altogether. But I don't think the entity will give up. I think the waiting game is just another one of its gambits. I will resist it for the rest of my life if I have to. I don't know what happened to the rest of the world, but I do know that this thing needs me to fall for its deceptions. If it needs that, then maybe, just maybe, I am a thorn in its agenda. Maybe Amy is still alive out there somewhere, kept alive only by my will to resist the deceiver. I hold on to that hope, rocking back and forth in my cell to pass the time. I will never give in. I will never break. I am a hero. The doctor read the paper the patient had scribbled on. It was barely readable, written in the shaky script of one who could not see. He wanted to smile at the man's steadfast resolve, a reminder of the human will to survive. But he knew the patient was completely delusional. After all, a sane man would have fallen for the deception long ago. The doctor wanted to smile. He wanted to whisper words of encouragement to the delusional man. 
He wanted to scream, but the nerve filaments wrapped around his neck and into his eyes made him do otherwise. His body walked into the cell like a puppet and told the patient once more that he was wrong and that there was nobody trying to deceive him. And that concludes reading Psychosis. Thanks a lot, guys, for listening. Um, remember to show that support by subscribing and leaving comments of what you thought of the reading as well as different stories you want us to read next. Um, more stories will be coming out. Link, uh, again, will be in description if you want to read it yourself. And that's about it. Just want to thank you guys for listening again. And that's, yep, pretty much wraps it up. Oh, whoops, uh, real quick, I forgot to mention that um, the story was written by Gar slash Matt Demersky. I forgot to mention that in the first video. So, sorry about that. Um, yeah, he's the one who wrote this, and thanks, guys. Bye.